Okay, guys, this is part two of the expressway setup. Uh, where we left off was the adding cups to expressway C. So we added call manager to expressway. We added cups to expressway already. Okay, so the next thing was to do the certificates. Um, I've already done mine, but I'll go through them again just so you see from an open SSL way um, how to do it. So valid CA uh, sign certs uh, are required to set up the traversal zone. There's no way around this for a lab environment, so you have to do this. You have to create a CA and you have to do this, or you have to use GoDaddy.com or CyberTrust or whatever. Um, the certs must include the client authorization or authentication extension. Um, I found when doing it in Windows CA that you had to use a template and then you had to add this particular little client authentication extension and then you had to deploy that template and then you could create um, or sign the certificate with the CA, with Microsoft CA. I chose to do it with OpenSSL. Um, it's a command line uh, utility and it's for me it was much easier uh, than dealing with Microsoft and deploying. I, I already had a CA internally but it wasn't an enterprise CA so I ran into some issues um, as far as having this client authentication extension available to me. So uh, we're going to install suitable server cert okay on both but on both C and E and we're going to um, Let's put before this. Let's do this. Are we going to install the CA root cert first, and then we'll install the suitable server certs. Basically, go get them signed from the server, and then bring them back in into CNE. Okay. So the way we do that is very easy. You go into maintenance. You go into security certificates. You're going to go into, oh, let's first install the CA root. So I have already gone through and uh, ran my um, OpenSSL. And a great document, if you guys are wanting to know how to do this or do this in the lab, is, is the first time I did this, this wasn't available. So we kind of fumble around. But this is the... Um, what page are we on here? Just to make sure I can come back to 21. Okay, this is the Cisco Expressway Certificate Creation and Use Deployment Guide. So it takes you through a lot of cool stuff. If you're just going to do use OpenSSL, um, I just go directly to this Appendix 2, creating a certificate uh, or certificate generation using OpenSSL only. And specifically, uh, you're going to you're not going to create a certificate request that that can be done in the Expressway itself. But um, let's see, you're going to do this. You're going to operate as your own CA, right? And you're going to configure the uh, OpenSSL to act as an S, uh, a CA. So you're going to kind of do all this stuff here, okay? Starting at where are we starting at here? Starting at 19. Uh, let me make sure. Yeah. Basically starting at 19. And then you're going to create a creating a certificate authority using OpenSSL. Yep. You're going to keep keep doing that. You're going to do all this mess here. Uh, and then you're going to creating a signed certificate. Uh, using a, a OpenSSL, yes, you're going to sign your certs. You're going to do a certificate request on each of the CNE, and then you're going to come sign them here. Okay, so it kind of talks you through that. Um, this right here, if the certificate request we're creating, no, you're not going to do that. It says if the cert request was created using OpenSSL, well, no, we're not going to do that because we're going to create the um, certificate request. There's a little tool in here under certificates. When you go to the server certificate, you're going to create, mm, you're going to generate the CSR here. 
Okay, so hopefully this all makes a little bit of sense here in a minute. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to upload the root cert. So you go to Trusted CA. This is the root certificate that has the private key. I think. Hopefully I'm not wrong there. <laughs> I get mixed up. Um, so here it is. I've already installed it. All you do is browse. And then with OpenSSL, it kind of tells you, it walks you through that document. You know, you create your private key and you create your CA cert. And then it tells you, hey, this is it right here. So you're just going to choose that. You're going to open. It's going to upload. It's going to come in here. And I got it right there. This name doesn't make I know you see UCC.browser.com, that means nothing right there. It's just a cert, that's just the, the root cert. Um, okay, so after that, we're going to go to, over to Expressway E, or that was C. We're going to go to Expressway E. We're going to do the exact same thing again. We're going to go to Trusted CA. We're going to browse. We're going to insert um, uh, that CA root cert, root certificate. So now both um, both servers got uh, the CA root cert that the private key, I used a private key to create the, that cert or that certificate. So again, we just put the same little file on both of these guys. Now they have this root certificate. Now I'm going to um, create the CSR, the Certificate Signing Request. So I go to uh, Security Certificates, Server Cert, and all I'm going to do is generate the CSR. If I generate the CSR, I'm not going to do it again here, but if I generate the CSR, and then I'm just going to download it, it's a little file, the document's going to talk you through, um, once you have that file, you're going to um, put it in this directory, in a demo CA directory, and then you're going to just rename it certcsr.pen. And after that, what you do is just run a command line. So I'll show you here. If I've done one, it says to bring it in here and go ahead and, and, and put it in this directory and then rename all right to cert CSR so now you're ready to sign the certificate request for that particular server and this particular server right now we're on the e server okay and then we're just gonna run this command line I have it right here it's right there again I'm not gonna go all through this because this document this document fully explains exactly what to do okay after that the document says inside here is going to be your cert, your server cert, your signed server certificate. What I do right away is I forget what they're named. It says in here what it's going to be named. Uh, copy, download, and after you do that, uh, you're going to find it in this directory. That's your signed uh, uh, server cert. So I just rename it excuse me I just rename it the name of my server just so I know and I can keep them just in case I need, need them again after that um, you just go and upload so if I generate uh, this thing here I'm going to if I click generate then it's gonna want me to uh, upload so it's gonna be waiting for that uh, certificate to come back there it's signed a or it did a certificate request um, so anyway, I won't go through that, but um, if, if I would generate here, it's just going to say, it's going to, this button's going to change and say, hey, you want to upload your certificate? Have you went and got it signed with OpenSSL or, or GoDaddy, you know, and got it back? Once you get it back, then you can upload it here. So I won't go through that. And then um, that's really it. So you do the exact same procedure for both the servers okay so again um, let me see if I have it spelled out in here we're get install the CA root cert alright this document uh, or if you go through GoDaddy 
they're going to give you a root cert. It's going to come in the package. It's coming in a little zip file and give you the root cert. In my case, it's it's it just you you create yourself going through the document that I showed you this certificate creation. If you're going to do it for just lab purposes or something like that, or you don't want public certs. Okay, then you're going to install a suitable server cert. In other words, you're going to get the to install that. You have to create the cert sign request or the CSR. Okay, after you create the CSR, you're going to download it and I'll say download file and then upload to open SSL or GoDaddy to get it signed. All right. Then um, you're going to download from Open SSL or just get the file that it creates. I'm going to say download here. Are you going to download from Open SSL or GoDaddy? And upload to the individual servers. Okay, create the sign request. You're going to download the file. Right, I'm going to go generate. After I get generate, it's going to say, do you want to download? I'll download the file. I'm going to go give it to GoDaddy or I'm going to put it in my directory here for OpenSSL. Then I'm going to um, uh, upload to SSL and then uh, sign it. Let's say upload. Yeah, I'm going to put one more here. Sign it with open SSL or GoDaddy or whatever you know whatever you're using CyberTrust or whatever and then we're going to download it you know uh, from OpenSSL it's just going to be in that in a directory or GoDaddy is going to give us an email and say hey your certificate's ready it's been signed and then you're going to upload it uh, again this is going to change once I generate and it'll say uh, if I want to upload the signed certificate Okay, hopefully that <coughs> makes a little sense. And we can use Microsoft. Yes, yes, we know that. I talked about that. Then we're going to create the traversal zones. Okay, this is the zone. We're going to create this, this connection between C and E that's going to traverse a firewall. All right, so this is client server thing where the uh, C is, gonna, is going to... Uh, uh, bring up a connection to E and then we're going to you know authenticate uh, authorize and we're going to do all that PKI stuff that needs to be done that's why these certificates uh, the server cert and the CA root cert need to be installed on both of these servers this has changed a little bit it used to be where you used to create the zone and it would, you would create the server zone and you create the client zone well they've made it a little bit easier. Let's look at Expressway C. Let's go look at configuration zones. It used to be you used to create a new and you would you would select client because the the Expressway C is going to be the client and the Expressway E you would go and do the zone zone you would do new and you would create the 
server on this side, so client server. They've made it easier now you can just choose unified communication, all right, and it creates the server by itself. I think it's just a, you know, the other one is still there, but I think it's just a name. Maybe it has some extra capabilities or something right there, but it's, it tells you right here. Let's do that again. Uh, univer uh, unified communication traversal. The new subzone, uh, the new zone traverses a firewall at the edge for MRA. It's basically what they want, what they're saying there. Anyway, so let's take a look at that. Let's go back. This is a zone I. So basically, you pick the same thing on each side, and it knows either to be a a client or a server. I name it, this little description is just my own name, so I name it client on this side, um, and I name it server on the other side. Okay, there's just a few things that you do here. You're going to create a username. Since this is the client, it's going to have a username and password on the C side. <coughs> Excuse me. You're going to create the port, that port number right there, um, 7001. That's the port that we're going to use. That's the port that's in the documentation. Uh, to open up for firewall in your firewall all this basically stays the same I'm sure I support is going to go to on later on when we go to 10.5 and we have 10.5 or 10.6 of, of Jabber as well and then um, where we're going to connect up to now you're going to have to use the FQDN here um, because that's going to be part of the digital search and how we're connecting and things like that so the FQDN of E. So again, this is the client going to go log into the the server. Okay, we're going to do the same thing on the E. We're going to create a unified communication traversal zone. We're going to name it. Uh, everything in here is pretty much default. We're going to create the username that we used over here, Anson. Now on this side, we're going to need to add edit local authentication database and add Anson and the password, whatever we used on the other side. Okay, and then the port 7001, yeah, I think that defaulted to that, so I didn't have to do anything there. And then the TLS verify subject name, so something in the subject name, one of the SANS or the subject alternate names or something needs to be here because that's how we're going to verify that certificate when that request comes in. So <coughs> you can go over here and if you want to look at your um, server certificate you can show a decode here and you're going to go down here to the um, subject alternate names right here and, and and one of these things need to be in there is basically what it's saying now there's other things that we can go in there it's beyond the reconfiguration uh, or the, the the basic setup of what I'm doing here but we won't go into that so uh, you could just get this guy and make sure that guy's in there alrighty let's see here okay uh, all that's default didn't have to change any of that the allow proxy registrations of course and um, all that's just about it once you once you save this it won't come up but it'll tell you um, you need to reboot and if you didn't reboot when you did the digital search uh, you have to reboot uh, now uh, I usually wait till I'm done with this traversal zone and um, and then reboot after that and that's really it that's the extent now there's some more configuration if you want to do federation and a lot more configuration if you want to do uh, Cisco meeting rooms and and, and stuff like that but um, uh, that's more basic stuff, especially in Cisco Media Room. It's SIP trunking, so that's easier to understand. This is kind of weird stuff that we haven't done before. So that's really it. After that, you're just going to make sure that uh, you know everything comes up. You can look at your zones, and uh, they'll say active. You want to look at them from both sides. This one says active, so I know all my... The biggest trouble here you're going to have is with certificates. It won't come up. You'll have some cert errors. You can always go look in your logs over here. And uh, the first time I did this, I just had to shotgun it. You know, changing my certs, changing stuff, changing the domains, all kind of stuff until I got it right. Now it just seems really easy. Uh, there's not much to it. But at first, there's a lot of moving parts that I had never played with before. 
and uh, it took me a little while to get it, get it up and going. And mostly centered around the subject alternate names because there's not a lot of documentation um, on that. And the domains that I had, I had a different domain inside than outside and things like that. So um, that's it. That's the, that's the extent of the setup. And uh, hopefully this has been helpful to you. And uh, uh, I'm sorry, guys, it took so long to get back to you and we didn't set up another meeting. But I wanted to close this out and give you guys the information that you needed.